So I was playing in Bakersfield, California at the time in the ECHL. Uh, it, was, it was February 14th. We were on the road in Utah. Um, it was late in the game. We were, we were down by a goal. We had just called a timeout. I was playing the left side of the ice. Uh, I got the puck coming through the neutral zone. We had a play. We had a set play. We were going to dump it in. We are going to overload the one side and, and, you know, try and make something happen. Um, as I came through the neutral zone, I saw one of their defensemen that was, it was, I was just about to cross center ice to get the red line to dump it in uh, to avoid that icing. And I, because I, I had a couple guys going down the right-hand side, and I saw the D-man coming across. And um, I, you know, I, as I lifted my back leg to dump the puck in, their defenseman had closed on me pretty quick. And it was kind of with a hip check that he hit me, but it was right in front of their bench. And at that point, it's tough to say what happened. I've, I've only watched the video once because it, you know, it, it didn't sit very well at the time. So um, it, I think my leg hit the top of the dasher. And when it hit the top of the dasher with him, you know, coming right through me, it, it literally snapped my leg in half. It, it, it was a compound fracture of the tip fib. And, um, you know, I, at first I didn't, I, I didn't know I broke my leg. Something was wrong. I kind of, I had fell on all fours. Um, I still had my gloves and my stick on. And when I went to get up, because I knew I had to get to the bench because I was hurt, but I went to push off and there was nothing there. So, at, you know, at that point, I kind of, I, I sat down and I, I looked down at my leg and it was a complete 90 degree break. And it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was one of those things that, you, you know, you don't like to see yourself. So, and I knew something was wrong at the time because it, it did happen right in front of their bench. Um, and, you know, as hockey players, you know, after a big hit and your teammate lays somebody out, you're going to, you're going to cheer, you're going to chirp, you're going to, you know, you're going to rip the guy, but that didn't happen. Everything went silent. So I laid down in front of their bench and as I looked up, I could see, you know, just the look in, in a lot of the players' eyes. Some guys turned away, some guys yelled for a doctor, some guys were telling me just to stay calm. So that's when, that's when the, the game of hockey actually, you know, it, it, it validated you know, the, the true spirit of the game at that point, you, you know, you never, you, you, you battle and, and battle and battle and battle and, and until, you know, somebody gets hurt. And, and that's, that's where you realize that, you know, this, this game is, is real and um, the people are real and, and the people are genuine and, and hockey players are great people. Uh, yeah. So th that was the break. I was rushed to the hospital. I had emergency surgery that night. They, they put a rod in four screws uh, at the time, I, I said the, my one question was, "Am I going to be able to play?" I was 32 years old at the time. I was having a, I was having a good season. Um, our team was was just starting to play well. Um, uh, living in California, things are fantastic. <laughs> you know, I, I had I had no no complaints whatsoever with with the way I was living. And they told me, "Yeah, you'll you know you'll go on. You'll you'll play. You'll be ready to play in six months after you know rehab all that stuff." And, um, unfortunately, uh, it, it just didn't happen. I, so what happened was I, I suffered. They, they put a hard cast on my leg. Uh, I guess from what I was told, they shouldn't have. It should have been a soft cast to allow for the swelling. Um, the swelling reversed itself, and I suffered a compartment syndrome where it kills all the nerves in your in your. It killed all the nerves in my ankle, um, in my foot, and my ankle. So what ended up happening is I lost dorsi and plantar flexion in my ankle. Um, so it was almost like my ankle was in a fused state, uh, completely numb at all times. So I really couldn't even feel my foot. Um, when it first started, I, I, my foot was really, really sensitive to any touch. Like if, and so, um, you know, I, I leave the, the hospital in Utah three days later, I fly to California. The doctor looks at me, he's like, you, we're admitting you right away, our orthopedic surgeon. Uh, they bring me to the hospital in California in Bakersfield. Uh, they start putting me through hyperbaric treatments twice a day to try and regain some some blood flow and circulation. Uh, that just, that didn't work. I spent two weeks there and, and that was the first time where my doctor in California, our orthopedic surgeon said, listen, amputation might be a possibility somewhere down the line. So um, that was a tough pill to swallow because you, you know, you look for the best in every situation and, and that's the worst. So, uh, so, you know, fast forward, I guess, you know, several years, I, I was on crutches for almost three years, three and a half years. Um, I went through a series of, of surgeries. I, I ended up uh, getting an infection. I was on a pick line for a full year. Um, I ended up losing bone mass in my leg. My leg, the bone shrunk by, or deteriorated by about almost an inch and three quarters. Um, so I was, I was, um, I was, I had another surgery to install an external fixator. If people don't know what that is, it's a device that almost um, that, that goes on the top and the bottom. So one was at the top of my ankle and the other one was on my shin. 
and it, they drill through the bone and you actually turn an Allen key every day oh. to separate the bone where new bone can grow in. So that was, uh, I, I had that for about eight, eight months, eight to 10 months. Um, several more surgeries. I had broke some hardware after that was removed. And so I had more surgeries to insert more hardware. And I guess the breaking point was, uh, I had moved back to Canada. I, all the, most of these surgeries were done in after the first three, the rest of the surgeries were done in Toronto. And, uh, so at that point I was, you know, you, you don't know where, where, where this is going. So I, I meet the surgeon in Toronto who's, who's starting to do all these surgeries for me. And, and he's a great guy and, and probably one of the best surgeons in Canada. And um, so anyway, his name is Dr. Michael McKee. He's working at St. Michael's Hospital in, in, in Toronto. And, and he's a hockey guy. He's just, he loves the game. He's, he's got connections to, to the Leafs and, and just all professional hockey players. So when I met Mike, he, he was very optimistic, but I, I think he was optimistic for, for my sake. And he wanted to give me belief that there was a possibility that we could fix this. And, and I felt confident that if anyone could fix it, it was going to be him. Um, yeah. So I guess the... In the end, what, what happened was I, I was doing okay, still no, no dorsier plantar flexion in my ankle, but I was getting by. And uh, Mike had removed some hardware in one of my sur- my last surgery. Uh, I think it was removed for about a week. I was walking through Home Depot one day. I went and picked up some hardware for, for a job I was doing at home. I bent over, and when I bent over in, heart, in, in Home Depot, I literally heard my, my leg snap. It sounded like a, a tree branch had snapped. So immediately full sweat and my, my, I was sweating right through my jeans and I knew that this is bad. So I, I tried to put pressure on it and it was literally, it was almost the same break that I had initially when I broke my leg. So I, I hopped out of Home Depot on one leg. I got in my car. I drove home. Um, I, I got home. I called my doctor and, uh, or actually we went to the hospital in Ottawa and they wanted to do surgery right away. They said, we're, we're rushing into surgery. And I said, I, I don't want you to touch me. So I, I called the doctor and in Toronto, Mike, I called his office. They put me through to him. He was in an OR doing, doing another surgery. He came out of the OR and he was, I think he was more upset than I was at the time that, that all this was for not three years of these surgeries and had, had all kind of gone for not. So um, at that point he said, can you be here tomorrow? Can you drive from Ottawa to Toronto? I said, yeah, I showed up in his office and he said, listen, man, he said, we, we got to make a decision here. He said, I want you to, he said, I don't want to do anything to it. I don't want to open you up again. He said, let's just, let's take some time. And, and I'm, I want to let you think about things. So at that point, I, uh, I went home back to Ottawa and I, you know, that's when it gets real. You start to think, okay, I've, I've got to make a decision here. And, and what direction do I want to go in? So like I said before, you come to a fork in the road where you got to pick one or the other. And, yeah. um, I was laying on the couch and I was watching hockey day in Canada. And when I'm watching this on TV, I, the one, they had a segment on, it was, it was the empty standing amputee hockey team, the national, the Canadian national team, the five time world champions. And at the time I didn't know the volume was down and you know, you're on pain meds and you're laying on a couch. So I watched these guys walk in, they're missing limbs. They get on the ice and, now, now these guys are on the ice, but it doesn't look like any of them are missing limbs. So I'm, I'm a little confused. So I turn it up and I start watching this and I realize, holy shit, Canada's got a team, an amputee hockey team. So here I'm thinking that, you know, I, I've got to make a decision to amputee my leg. Who better to reach out to than, than to this group of guys? If anyone knows what I'm going through, some of these guys might. Um, I later found out that I was, I was the only guy that ever broke his leg and would, would lose his leg playing hockey. But, um, you know, these guys, have been, some of them have been playing for years. And, and some of them, you know, uh, there's one guy from, from the Windsor area, Mike Barnwell. He was a military vet. He was, uh, he was on the unfortunate side of a, a roadside bomb in Afghanistan. And so you meet all these guys. So I, I reached out to them. They called me back. And, and I started talking to a couple of them. And, and just, uh, it, it blew my mind. So it, it brought me to a, a place that I never imagined I'd get to. Um, so with their support and, and, and reaching out to different friends and family and, and really talking this through, I realized, you know what, this, this might be an option. So I ended up, I was in Florida, um, and, and I was, uh, I, I was at a winners in Florida in the change room. My phone rang one day and it was, it was the surgeon from Toronto. It was Dr. Mike McKee. And all he said, he said, Sean, how are you? So I'm doing well, Doc. How are you? He said, good. He said, are we going to do this or what? And at that point, I, I was at peace with it. I'd made up my mind. I said, yeah. I said, book the surgery. I said, let's do this. And he said, you know what? He said, I've done 
hundreds of these. He said, you're going to be better off for it in the end. You're going to be able to get your life back. You're going to play hockey again, golf again. You're going to be able to, you know, do any groceries. He said, anything and everything, run, you, you'll be able to work out again. Anything you want to do, you'll be able to do. So that was comforting to hear that from him. And, and in the end, I think he was, he had, he had given me all the time that I needed to make that decision and he didn't want to make it for me. And, um, you know, so that's kind of where we ended up. I had an amputated in, in, um, in June of 2011, uh, the world championships, uh, were in Finland in May. Um, so not even a year later and the boys that I had talked to on the national team said, you know, don't expect that you'll be able to play in this because it's, you know, learning how to skate without a leg is, isn't easy. Uh, and there was, there were no truer words spoken at that point because I, you know, I, I, I was fitted for my prosthetic, um, shortly after the swelling had gone down. So I think I got my prosthetic in, in September. I went through a whole rehab process. Ottawa's got an an incredible rehab facility at the hospital that, um, a lot of our military goes to and, um, and it's, it's, it's world-class. So I ended up there. I was supposed to be there for eight weeks, um, I, I always, I often joke that they let me out a little early for on good behavior, but I, I went through the program. I finished it in five weeks. And from there, the first thing I did when I got home with my prosthetic uh, that day was uh, I put my skates on. So here I am on my, on my porch with my skates on and people are, are looking at me like, what the hell is this guy doing? You know, he's an amputee, yeah. got his skates on. And it's so, but I, I realized that, you know what, we need goals. Everyone needs goals. And I've always, I've always set goals for myself and, and if that's any lessons to any of the kids, coaches, parents, set a goal, set a daily goal, set a weekly goal, set a yearly goal. It's just if you can set a goal, um, you're going to be, you know, that much better for it. And, and it'll help you achieve to where, to what you're trying to get to. So um, with that being said, uh, what I, what I did was I, I, I realized I got to learn how to skate. Now. So I, I ended up going to an, or I, I went, I started getting nice. It was public skating and my dad had come down to visit and, and we had gone out and I literally could not, I couldn't even, I had to hang on to the boards. I think my first yeah. skate, I made it around the ice once, I, one lap. And, and what you don't realize is, is that it's so painful to be in, in a prosthetic at first. Your, your stump gets sore and um, a lot of things that you don't think of prior to having the surgery. Uh, so after a while, I started to get it a bit. And there was always a group that played shinny after us. And, and I thought, you know what? I could probably get out there with these guys and start playing. So I did. I, I, would, I slowly started with them. I'd go out three or four days a week. And, and then I had a, but once it got cold in the winter time, I had a good buddy of mine in, in Ottawa and he, he encouraged me to go to the outdoor rink. So he'd pick me up every day. We'd go to the outdoor rink. And it was almost like I was a little kid again, because I'm starting from scratch. I, you know, I'm learning how to play hockey. I'm learning how to play yeah. the game over again and you know it goes back to what i talked about lengthening my stride with glenn rakoski so yeah. now i had to figure out ways to actually stride and not you know not not rely on my dominant leg so i reached out to the guys on the team again the all the leg amps on the mpt team and i said listen are there any tricks to this so they'd say yeah do this do that and you know make some alterations to your prosthetic and work with your prosthetist so um so i went to the first selection camp that they had and uh <laughs> like i said i could always shoot the puck so one of yeah. my good friends, Neil Martin, I played junior with him. He lives here with Newberry, and he's, he's been my best friend since we played junior hockey together. Coniston boys, so not far from yep. you. And uh, so Neil came with me. He said, yeah, I'll go check it out with you. So I get on the ice. First drill, I get the puck. I step over the blue line. I fire one. I hit the goalie right in the head. I felt so bad. Just something you don't do, right? And as, as, a, as a former professional hockey player, you should know better. And yeah. So I, I, yeah. I go over to him. I just, I'm like, sorry, man. I really didn't mean to do that. I apologize. He's like, no, no, it's all good. He said, I just couldn't react. I, you know, he said, it came at me so quick. So there's Neil <laughs> sitting in the stands. I look at him. I just looked up at him. He's shaking his head at me like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> so, uh, so they invited me back to the second camp. I, and then I ended up making the team. So... We went to Finland wow. in May of uh, 2012 and won the sixth world championship. And that was the last one. So there's supposed to be another one um, this May in, in Vegas. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping it comes to fruition because I'd like to play again for sure.